Hi there, my name is Darren Vogt. Uh, I am currently teaching at East Fork Lutheran School in White River, Arizona, and today I'm here to present to you on Makerspace and Genius Hour. Both of these are brand new to the educational styles of teaching. We're going to take a look at how they are similar, how they are different, and what are the different aspects that come along and the benefits when it comes to Makerspace and Genius Hour. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. The first thing is obviously my presentation outline. I will copy a link below for you, Professor, as to uh, so that you can go ahead and log on to my presentation and take a look at it as well. The first thing is Makerspace. We're going to take a real quick look at this video that is off of YouTube, so real quick. Okay, so there you have it. There's our quick look at Makerspace through that YouTube video that someone made. Uh, now let's talk about what is Makerspace. Makerspace is a collaborative workspace inside of a school, library, or separate public private facility or for making, learning, exploring, and sharing that uses high-tech to no-tech tools. Uh, this basically is trying new things for students and seeing if they enjoy it. Uh, trying things like 3D modeling and things like uh, building with Legos and creating new things and sharing their experiences with one another as well as coming up with new ideas for each other. Uh, these specs, or spaces are open to kids, adults, and entrepreneurs and have a variety of maker equipment including 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC machines, soldering irons, and even sewing machines. A makerspace, however, doesn't need to include all of these machines or even any of them to be considered a makerspace. If you have cardboard, Legos, and art supplies, you're in business. As in, you don't need to buy these really expensive tools um, to go ahead and have a makerspace. Like I was looking at a 3D printer the other day, and it runs around 400 bucks and upward. Um, that's a lot of money, and you don't need to have that in order to have a makerspace. What is the purpose of makerspace? It's a mindset of creating something out of nothing and exploring your own interests that are at the core of a makerspace. Um, we also want to be critical in these new technology skills that are necessary for the 21st century, um, especially in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, or known as STEM. Uh, they provide hands-on learning and help critical thinking skills and even boost self-confidence especially around the area of problem solving, um, giving students an opportunity to use their minds and come up with something that is amazing. Some of the skills that are learned in a space or maker space pertain to electronics, 3D printing, 3D modeling, coding, robotics, and even woodworking. These are all areas that are of the 21st century and are, are almost necessities of the, the jobs that America is producing for now and in the future. Um, so we want to really produce our kids into becoming um, ready for the world and the different technologies that come along with them. Here are just some of the things that you can do when you're making or when you're using a maker space, and that is coding, 3D printing, laser cutting, soldering, electronics, robot building, uh, learning circuits and electricity, sewing, woodworking, taking apart sessions as in actually having a computer and actually taking it apart. Uh, my uh, brother-in-law, um, they re he's really big into this kind of stuff and so what he did is he bought a car at a 
at a at a dumpster at, at, at a dump site and he just let his kids go to work and take it apart as much as they could and it was kind of cool to be able to have the kids uh, try taking things apart and wondering what they truly were for. Uh, inventing is also a big one and there's many more uh, blessings and positive things that come from uh, makerspace. What is the role of the instructor? Basically it's their job to be facilitators and enablers making means that students themselves are active. This automatically shifts the teacher's role from leading, which is the traditional way of being an instructor, to being more of the support and the tutor. So if a, ch if a child has a question, they can ask, but it's mostly the students that they want them to be learning on their own and asking questions and not being afraid to wonder why or how something works that way. The outcomes of, uh, that you can expect from students are problem-solving skills, creative and imaginative uh, attributes, productive and active learning, collaboration amongst students. We want them to be working together. That is a big thing that, um, that, that future jobs are looking for is that people can work together. And then knowledge of different technologies. Think of all the different things that you're going to use during Makerspace and that can translate over to your future workforce. Pros and cons of being in a potential for use in a structured school environment, collaboration, problem solving skills, use of different technology, all benefits of Makerspace. The cons I can see of them are state standards and testing. Are you preparing the students for that? Uh, that's a good question to ask. And then obviously teacher preparation and management, it's going to take a lot of time out of the teacher's uh, work workspace so that they can make sure that the students are actually learning. What about in my ministry? Uh, the pros were all the same for me. The cons were obviously management. Uh, I really think my students would really struggle with that, um, being able to manage themselves as well as limited resources. I also think our school doesn't have that big of a budget um, just because of the culture that we are in. Also time and motivation too, I think, just being the students being motivated to learn. Uh, there is a video on my PowerPoint of, of examples of students at this Lee Elementary School being part of a makerspace, and yet they were creating things and creating cool events for them to learn and be productive. The teachers give them a prompt, and they would go ahead and be creative and use their imagination. I'm not going to show the video just for time's sake. Uh, then real quick, Genius Hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video for Genius Hour. There's a movement happening right now in classrooms all over the country that encourages students to explore their own passions and creativity. Students of all grade levels will engage like never before. I present to you Genius Hour. This is where student passions come to life. Genius Hour has many roots, but is based on a business practice that Google uses with their development team. They allow their developers to spend 20% of their time at work on projects that interest them, provided they have the potential to advance the company. The idea is simple. Allow employees to focus on their own passion projects, and productivity will go up. There are many commercial projects that have been developed by these 20% projects, including Gmail, Google Talk, and Google News. Fortunately for students, Educators have grasped onto the idea and coined the term Genius Hour. This is where teachers allow students to work on whatever project they want during their own learning time. We've all had students in our class that aren't motivated by the traditional school environment. The beauty of Genius Hour is that it provides a path to intrinsic motivation. When students have a say in their learning, they become much more engaged, their confidence is boosted, and the entire learning process becomes, you guessed it, fun. I have three rules for Genius Hour projects. The first rule is there must be a driving question. The student needs to be able to communicate what they want to learn about. If we can go out and find the answer on Google with a quick search, then the question is going to need some tweaking. Secondly, the project must involve research. If the student wants to build a model rocket that goes 200 feet in the air, then they need to provide the resources they use for that project. The last part is that the project must be shared. Ideally, the project needs to be shared not only with the class, but shared with the entire world. 
some example projects that I had in my sixth grade classroom that turned into really great projects were two students that learned to code at codeacademy.com. One girl developed her drawing skills by creating a sketchbook all about wolves. And yet another student brought awareness to the dangers of smoking by creating a website. Dean's Hour is one of the most impactful things that I've done in my classroom, and the students love it. It also makes for a great after school program or activity period project. If you'd like to learn more about Genius Hour, please visit the website geniushour.com. Okay, that's just a brief uh, picture of what Genius Hour truly is. Okay, Genius Hour is an idea that is becoming more and more popular in education today. It is an example of learner centered strategy that empowers students and takes them on a systematic journey to deeper levels of learning. Where did this come from? Obviously, like the video said, it came from Google. Uh, Google came up with the idea of, uh, spent, of allowing employees to spend 20% of their time and that would help imp uh, that would help Google developers to um, be more motivated towards the work that they were doing. Uh, and as everybody does and takes Google into their normal life, so we also thought, let's take what Google preaches and let's put it into education. So what does Genius Hour look like? Uh, phase one, obviously, is posing a research question. You need it, it needs to be interesting to the student, and it also needs to be relevant and researchable. The second phase is the knowledge quest. Students pursue answers to their research questions that are interesting to them, and they look on, on computers and tablets and find information. Then they document their findings in journals and blogs. The third phase is the sharing knowledge. Students give a five-minute multimedia presentation at the end of a semester to share with other students and maybe even parents and other teachers what they have learned. And let me remind you, this is one class period per week that the students are doing this. So it's a long duration um, event. Then what is the role of the instructor? Oops, sorry, hold on. Genius Hour's purpose is for students to take personal interest in a topic of student's choice. They're going to be motivated. They want to learn more. They want to figure out what it is because they are motivated inside because this is something that interests them. During Genius Hour, the teacher is basically there to be a facilitator, a guide, and a co-learner. Uh, they are no longer the, the instructor. They're not the knowledge giver. They are the person to help facilitate the student in their learning. Research questions is the biggest thing that you're going to probably get out of this, and you're also going to get a lot of knowledge out of this. So research supporting questions. Journal entries and blogs are going to be really important with this research learning part. The empowerment and the motivation of learning and also the presentations of showing parents this is what we're doing in our classroom. The pros and cons of being in a potential structured classroom. Self-empowerment, that's the biggest thing with the, with the Genius Hour. Internet-based research, the students are on the internet, they are looking for information and they are obtaining that information. And then obviously the presentations, giving, getting up in front in public and having public speaking, that is a wonderful thing. Cons, it's very time consuming and it's also a long duration too, so I think we uh, that's going to be kind of a, a, a con to being in a classroom. In my own classroom, I could really see it being self-empowerment, doing internet-based research, and the presentations, I personally really struggle in my classroom with getting my kids to do public speaking. This would be a wonderful way because they are interested in it. And this would be motivational driven. Uh, students being motivated in my classroom is really a negative thing. Uh, cons, duration, and obviously limited resources. I don't have computers for all of my students. Here's a video if you want to go on to my, onto the slideshow and watch of a classroom, a second grade classroom that does Genius Hour and they did a wonderful job. Here is my references down below so you can take a look at them. And that is my presentation. I really hope you enjoyed my presentation. It was fun to make, um, really fun to learn about. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Thanks.